Family Robinson. Hatchet. Survival. Tomboyish fun. Surviving the wild. Everyone thought of doing one of those. But our dear, our main character Sam Gribbley, manages to actually do it. Hello, fellow Questers! It is I, Aaron the Quester. Today I have this epic, awesome book. My Side of the Mountain of Newberry Honor Book by Jean Craighead, George, herself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, this is about a boy named Sam Gribbley. And he's really, really bored in his New York apartment, crammed with, his, uh, with a bunch of siblings, and he really, really doesn't like it. So basically, he runs away into the mountains, and there he learns to live. Now, most of us, with a bottle of Gatorade and a bag of chips, might have gone out, got escaping, <laughs> deciding that they want to, you know, run away, and then come back 40 minutes later asking for dinner. Well, that actually happened to Sam Gribble, except he actually did it. He hitchhiked into the mountains, and there he made a home. Well, well, first of all, he needed, you know, a home. Well, he figured out how to light a fire, and then he figured out how to make a hook for himself, and then he figured out how to, you know, catch fish. His food supply was finished, but he needed a home. And since winter was fast approaching and the weather was still cold since it was spring, he kind of wanted to, you know, get a home. So what he did was one day he find out that inside a tree, <coughs> it was... That was my camera, man. Anyway, inside a tree is kind of hollow. It's hollow, and it's rotting inside. So what he did was that he he basically chiseled out everything inside the little little trunk home, and he went inside, and it was snug. He could afford to lie down there, and he had little grooves for little storages of food, and it was great. Then he tamed a falcon. He first found a falcon's nest and had to climb a cliff to get it. Jesus, that is daring. And he got up and he found the biggest chick of them all and called her, it was her chick, Fearless. And yeah, it's a cool little falcon and later on he would train her to hunt for him. Now he's been like having fun and he's been making traps in order to find some sort of game like rabbits, squirrels, and these days he'd been living a life on frogs. Then came the summer. In the summer, food was plentiful. All sorts of berries and roots he could eat. And of course, he had venison and all sorts of game. Well, small game, to be honest, not deer or anything like that. Then, after his happy times in the summer of hunting, of swimming in the water, he, he then found a sort of... Hmm, what do I call it? Fall came. And when fall came, hunters came. And when hunters came, well, hunters basically, like, shot their deer. And then sometimes, they lost their prey. And when they, when they went back to their homes, not being able to find the deer that they shot, our little boy, our dear Sam Gribbley, took the meat and ate it himself. And he used the, used the skin to make a jacket so he could you know, survived the winter. And he also managed to find a way to use clay as a fireplace. Then, of course, it's kind of funny, funny, funny. Um, a English teacher stumbles in and he's, uh, he's an English teacher and he's just hiking and then he gets lost and then he falls down and he's unconscious in the woods. And our dear Sam rescues him and he, he is really nice about it. And he doesn't tell anyone else about how he's staying in the woods. And together, they, they had, need some help. And, and they do some stuff. And he teaches a lot of things. <laughs> because he is a teacher after all. And he teaches our dear Sam how to make a little bit of pottery. Nothing too fancy, of course. But it was something that he could store jam in. And jam. Oh, yes. He decided to make some jam with the berries, various berries that grew within the woods in the wild. And yeah, it's just really, really nice. It's survival stuff, you know? 
And also, she found out a way to make like semi salt by like burning inner barks of a tree that I don't remember the name of. And it's black, sure, but it's salty. That's what matters. And it's just been a really grand time. Then, since it's fall, of course it's becoming winter. And he needs to do something about it. So he makes a fireplace, as I mentioned, using clay and a mixture of pine sap to seal it up. And he just does a lot of things, and he uses a metal piece to hold it up. Then he puts some wood in it and built a fire in it, just enough to keep him nice and cozy, but not enough to kill him, because, you know, he's in a tree, <coughs> and he might suffocate. So he makes some holes in the bark, and he lives within the tree. Genius. And then, of course, Halloween comes, and he has some little fun parties while doing that, and then, at Christmas, his dad comes to visit, because it was on the news, literally, on the news, it says, there's a wild boy li living in the mountains. And it's like, hmm, yeah, press, sure. But it's actually true this time, because Sam is literally living in the mountains. And then, his dad second guesses where his son is, and it starts to holler. And our dear Sam meets his dad, and his dad looks around and he's like, he's impressed. Like, the tree? Ingenious. No one would find him. And the fire and all the- he's been well fed. He doesn't look starved at all. In fact, he looked like he'd been eating more than our dear daddy. <laughs> and he shares some of his vention, his food, with, da with his dad. And food is plentiful for now. He never really starved. Well, on the first couple weeks he starved because he didn't know how to catch food and stuff. But now, he's an expert. And he is generous in giving out his food too. And his dad is super nice about it and he's impressed because he thought his son would come back in a day, then a month, then a year. But he never really came back. So it's just really, really funny. And it's every boy's dream, you know, although I'm a city boy, I would never be able to do that. Although I do love nature and camping, I would never do it without a lighter. I can barely make a fire with the lighter. <laughs> and it's just a story about a kid going to the wild and surviving. And kind of discovering, like, a peaceful part of himself. He observes the wild, he makes friends with the various different little animals that lives in the woods. And it's just great for him, and he really loves it, and it's every boy's dream to go on a permanent camping adventure. Then his adventure ends, but it doesn't end by going back to New York, oh no. His mom, and his siblings, and his dad, they all come to the mountains, and they say that they are gonna live there too. And they build a house, and that was that. And then the story ends. Hashtag epic, that was a great buy. And honestly, I expected like a sad realistic fiction story, kind of like the fault in our stars, but what I got was a hatchet adventure style story, and it was epic. And I highly recommend for you to read this book. It has a nice mixture of survival, number one survival, number two research, because you have to do your research in the library before doing this, and it shows something about determination and not backing out when things get hard. I think it's an excellent book. And of course, I may be missing the important parts, the hidden message within it. But honestly, come on, boys out there. Haven't you imagined, at least once, even when you were way younger than you are now, have you ever wondered what would happen if you, had a, if you lived next to a river with a fire, with a little shelter, would you be able to survive? And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. It's about a kid goes into the wild and discovers that there is more life in this world than he ever imagined. Read this book. Have a great day.